In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a remote agent to communicate back with your main PA server monitor installation. This little diagram shows our central office. We have PA server monitor installed, and what we're going to do is install an agent on one of the machines at a remote client office. The first thing we need to do is start the PA server monitor console and in this case it needs to be on the machine where PA Server Monitor was installed so we can check some prerequisites. The prerequisites are under the HTTP server settings. We need to make sure that SSL is being used for HTTP communication and we need to note the port that we're using. In this case we're using the default port of 81. That port needs to be opened on the firewall it needs to have an incoming port because you'll notice that the agent is going to talk and communicate with our main installation through that port. Okay, so we have those all set up. Let's switch over to the agent machine. I'm remote desktoped in here and let's connect. We're using self-signed certificates, so sometimes you see warnings like this. You can just ignore them and continue or add the root CA to the trusted root certificates list. When we go to the top level report, if you scroll to the very bottom, there's an installation link. Um, that makes it easy so that you don't have to carry the installer around with you. When you show up at a remote site, open a browser and go grab it. I'm going to pause as I run the installer and we'll come back as soon as it's done. Here we are at the very end of the agent installation and it's going to start the service and start the configuration app for us. If you need to run the configuration app later you can find it under start program files PA server monitor. Okay first we need to type in the address of the main service. How are we going to access it? It will be the same URL we use to download our app. So here's the um, host name as seen from the internet and the port. We're going to do a quick test. Everything's connected. Um, we see that the agent is running and it's waiting for the login to succeed. So that means we're connected uh, but we're not logged in to the central service and we need to give a descriptive name to this particular agent. Um, I had already filled this in a little bit earlier. So that's all we have to do on the agent side. Let's flip back now to the central service and see what, what we see there. We're going to come down to the remote agents and if we open it we'll see there's a Dr. Jones dental office. There's the agent we installed and it, if we notice it's gray, it's not connected, it says it needs to be accepted. We can right click and look at the status. Agent needs to be accepted. If you recognize the agent, it's one you installed, then you just say accept agent. And yes, we do want it to communicate. What that's going to do is let the agent now connect to the, the central service and um, start doing all the tasks that we have for it. And in just a few moments here, this will connect up, turn green. We can probably go back and look at the agent itself. And this will change in just a moment. There we go. We're connected and active. And on this side, we're connected. There's, there's one more thing that we're going to want to do before we leave the remote agent. And that is to change the account that the remote agent is running as. By default, the remote agent runs as local system, which means it can only access resources on the computer it's installed on. We're going to want to monitor eventually servers on that LAN at the remote site. So I'm going to change this and have it run as an account that will allow it to access those remote servers on the LAN and we apply the settings the remote agent will stop switch to the new credentials restart and we'll notice up here that 
um, the service is restarting and now it's reconnected and we're good to go.